Hello and welcome to this video in which we look at hydrostatic pressure on a gate. Uh, hydrostatic pressure in this case is being used as an example of a distributed force. And our goal in this video is to find an equivalent concentrated force. So we need the magnitude of the force and we also need the location where that force would be applied to the gate. So here we have a, um, a, a diagram of our situation. We have water that's 24 feet deep. We have a dam or wall or some other sort of structure here. And down at the bottom, we have a gate that's six feet tall and three feet wide. And the idea is that this might be hinged to flip upwards or it might slide up or down. Uh, in some way, it might open. And what we want to do is we want to find the force on the gate due to the water. We, we want actually an equivalent force so we want to find the magnitude of the force, which would be F, and we want to find the position where that force would be applied. And we'll call that H bar. Now, in order to um, make this work, let's apply a coordinate system so that we know what we're talking about when we talk about H. So I'm going to do a coordinate system that looks like this. Uh, this axis is H, and so the top of the gate up here is zero. The bottom of the gate is six feet. And then this axis will be um, the magnitude of the weight, uh, or I'm sorry, the magnitude of the uh, force per um, force in pounds per foot, the distributed force on the gate and uh, we'll call this W of H. So if you look at the situation, um, uh, W of H is going to be um, the specific weight of the water, which is 62.4 pounds per cubic foot times three feet because the gate is three feet wide, so we're taking a slice here that's three feet wide. And then um, it will be the, the distributed force magnitude will be equal to 18 feet. That's the depth of the water when I first start with h equal to zero plus h. Okay, so this gives us. Um, this gives us an expression for this W of H. And I can simplify this to be 3,369.6 pounds per foot plus 187.2 pounds per square foot times H. OK, so we have what we need to know. Now, um, or we have the information that we need to compute what we need to know. Now what we want to do is find F, and we want to find uh, H bar, the location where this F is applied. So I've drawn a tidier set of diagrams here. Again, this gives us our axes. Uh, this shows us W of H. Um, I've taken these axes and rotated them counterclockwise by 90 degrees. So this gives us what our W of H is. So all we have to do now is work some integrals. So um, the magnitude of F is the area under this function. And that will be the integral from 0 to 6 feet of 3,369.6 pounds per foot plus this other term, 187.2 pounds per square foot. And we'll put parentheses around this. This is times h, and the whole thing is dh. OK, so um, to work this out, I can break it into two integrals. I have this guy, this constant, times h dh. And then I have this constant times h, or I'm sorry, I have this constant without any h. So it's this constant dh, this constant times h dh. And I work out the integral from 0 to 6 feet 
and after I'm all done, I get uh, the following 23,587.2 pounds. Okay, so that's another way you could do this is find the area under this trapezoid, but this gives us that force. The next thing we need to do is find h bar. Okay, so we know that h bar will be the integral from 0 to 6 feet of h, w of h, dh, over the integral from 0 to 6 feet of w of h, dh. This guy we've already got. We just figured this out. This is the magnitude f. So what we need now is to figure out this guy. So let's go to a nice clean screen and do that. Uh, let's see, we have um, the integral from 0 to 6 feet of h. w of h is going to be 3369.6 pounds per foot plus 187.2 pounds per square foot times h dh. So now I can break this into two terms. I have, uh, let's see, where's another color that's, uh, we'll use this uh, ugly green here. Okay, so I have h times this guy so I'm going to have the integral from 0 to 6 feet of h times this constant oops and when I work that out I get that this is um, 60,652.8 pounds or foot pounds okay and uh, let's see, we'll find another color, perhaps this brown, to represent this term times h. We have the integral from 0 to 6 feet of h squared, 187.2 pounds per square foot dh. Okay, so I have this h times this h times this constant, and then I integrate that. And again, without giving you the details of that integration, I get 13,478.4 uh, uh, foot-pounds. And so the total integral is going to be the sum of these two guys, which I get 74,131.4 pounds times feet. And so I go back to my original expression for h bar. I plug in the one I just found here and I plug in f for here and the whole the whole expression then ends up being 3.143 feet. So what that says is the equivalent force is a force here of uh, this magnitude, 23,587.2 pounds, and it is a distance of 3.143 feet from here to here. So it's uh, a distance of 3.143 feet from the top of the gate. So, there you have it. We've used integrals to um, find both the magnitude of the force and the uh, location where that force is applied. And hopefully you've come away with the impression that this isn't so hard. This is something that you can do. It just involves integration. Now, I have to say I've chosen examples that are easy to integrate because I don't like to spend a whole lot of time on camera in integrating ugly, complicated things. But conceptually, if I had a, uh, a function here that was more complicated, uh, all I would do to get f is integrate the function and to integrate or find h bar, integrate h times the function and divide it by uh, 
uh, f. Uh, by the way, uh, sometimes this h bar is called a first moment. Um, you'll see this sort of thing in statistics all the time when you've got random variables and uh, you're finding moments of distributions. Okay, so hopefully um, you found this helpful and useful. Thanks for watching.